Hello friends and welcome to the Kings of Anglia Christmas podcast 2021. It's not Christmas really because we've got any great Christmas festivities to enjoy. It's Christmas mainly on this show because it's just a couple of days away from Christmas as we record. I am Mark Heath. I'm pleased to say in this build up to Christmas this week, I've got three of Santa's finest elves full of glad tiding and festive good cheer to bring to you today, friends. I'm going to start with the man who's got a face on the wall in his bedroom, Stuart the Dr. Watson. We're just saying, Stewie, those, um, that bit of driftwood you've got behind you and then the mirror looks a little bit like a closed eyelids and a nose. Okay. Yeah. It's like a I sad, see, like a sad face. Yeah, like a slightly tired face. And fittingly, it's in your bedroom, which is lovely. I also like the <laughs> fact we, we're going, we're getting slowly a tour of, of your house through the course of the podcast. We've got obviously got your, your main office, which is now full of presents, I understand. We're now in your bedroom for the first time, where the magic happens, kids. Uh, I think we've been in your lounge before on one of the live shows. Um, who knows? Watson's Garden coming to you in 2022. Possibly, tu- yeah. Tu- the, tu- the, uh, the office slash junk room is uh is chock a block with with presents so Someone, uh, someone's gonna have a very merry christmas and we'll get onto that in due course yes. um let me introduce the rest of the elves and we'll come back to that <clears throat> roscoe you're um the youngest and chirpiest of all elves how are you my friend you like had a fresh trim for christmas yeah just um bracing myself just in case we can't go to barbers for like months so yeah just get it in there get it in there um but yeah very well thank you Excellent. I love the fact everyone else is, is wondering about how they're going to survive without like going to shops and stuff. You're just going, if I can't get a haircut, there's trouble ahead. I'm going to end up looking like a caveman because I can't do it myself. Can't trim my beard, can't do my hair. No. Also a man with great hair, wearing an excellent hoodie and also with a, a Joe Johnson bobblehead on his desk this morning in honour of the man who just broke an NBA record last night. Andy the Hutch Monster, Hutchzilla, Andrew, Michael Hutchins, Adolf Hutchler, Santa Hutch. No, it doesn't work. Andy Warren, how are you? <laughs> I'm all right, mate. If we're if we're elves, what are you, what are you? Are you Santa or are you? Uh, I don't what's know. What's your role? What's your your role in this racket? What's I mean? What is the ranking? You've got elves, haven't you? And then what's what's? Is there a senior elf? Is that there's Santa? Got, I don't there's know. Got, there's got to be a senior elf, like a union rep. Yeah, maybe. that's um, that's me then. I'm the uh, I'm the I'm I'm that one. The 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 slightly more senior elf who. Uh, delegates and shuffles paper that's my i'll be the i'll be the fire marshal you get an extra like 12 quid a year for that don't you that's um, important and you get a little jacket as well yeah i'll be that do they have many fires in the north pole i'd have thought so they're making highly flammable things aren't they in a toy factory mate you've got to have it's all it's all going off elf and elf and safety boys Ah! Uh, <laughs> this is great banter this is absolutely great banter to start the christmas show and um, before we kick off obviously there's a lot to talk about this week boys what stage are we at at christmas in your respective households two of you have got young daughters has excitement reached fever pitch yet in your household watson how excited is young aya uh very yeah very very we're uh, we've been knee deep in lego this morning getting some some old sets uh put together mm-hmm. um Yes, that's why the spare bedroom is off limits because Santa's elves have been making stuff. Ah, decided, superb. yeah. So, um, I've had to create some makeshift lock for the outside just to keep keep everything quiet. Excellent. So that's why I'm here this morning. Superb, uh, Hutchie. You've got a young daughter as well. Is uh, is young J Unit as I call her, Jessica? Is she super hyped for Christmas 2021. Uh yeah. Not she's not super hyped. Like loving the tree, loves her advent calendars. But but once she, it's not Christmas twenty four seven, which is which is great for me. Love that. And she's a bit young for. If we don't tell her it's Christmas and exciting at that exact minute, she's too young to just remember all the time. Okay. So uh, she's all she's all right. She will be though. She will be You're- calm. Obviously, one of your key character traits, such as we've often discussed on this show, is your calm as a Hindu cow. Um, unfla- <laughs> unflappable. Has, has young Jessica inherited her, her father's unflappability? Is she also just like this? I mean, uh, unless she doesn't want to go in the bath or <laughs> doesn't want to eat her carrots. Um, yeah, she's got she's got it. She's got it, but she doesn't know how to utilize it at all times. The Warren Which, superpower that will come. That will come. It is a superpower too, Rossi. You've got numerous superpowers. Uh, I don't really want to think about that at this point. But um, 
Yeah, how's Christmas looking in the in the Hall's household? Your better half, your significant other, works Christmas Day, isn't she? Yeah, sadly, um, and she's the one who's in charge of the presents because I'm terrible. Um, although I've you know I'm I've done a bad thing, I've done a Ross thing, um, and I've decided to send one of my presents. Um, so I've got it from Argos. Other retailers are available, and I didn't change my address, so it's been sent to my old address. Um, oh. luckily my my housemate still, my former housemate still lives there. So um, after the podcast, I'm going to have to rush to my old house to get it because it's my mum's present. Oh. So um, yeah, it's not going so well so far. Um, there's one of, there's always, one of your yeah. there's one of your superpowers, Rossi. Yeah, being a complete shambles. Oh, and he's got the hat out. Lovely. It is Christmas. Okay. Um, okay. I, I boys in the Heath household last night. I put on Die Hard. Definitely a Christmas film. Harvey Davis, you are completely out of your tree, sending me a message saying it's not. I had a little whiskey and I wrapped all my presents, so it's definitely Christmas in the Heath household. It's also a time of great excitement and glad tidings at Ipswich Town Boys, which obviously is what we're here to talk about in depth now. Um, Kieran McKenna, it was his first press conference on Monday. Um, obviously, since we last spoke, they've had the Sunderland game, which we got on to in due course. Other things have been happening, but I think by far the thing that most people want to talk about, us to talk about, would be Kieran McKenna. You were both there at the virtual presser, boys. Your first impressions, Mr. Watson, of young Kieran McKenna. Understated, confident, measured. Um, it's not Paul Cook laughing and joking. He's not He's not that sort of level of, of personality. I think that's been clear to see so far. But someone who clearly thinks very deeply about football, who has come here with very clear ideas. I, I didn't get any sense at all of this being a man that was kind of overawed by the, the by by sort of coming in to this job. It was someone that I think very early on said, I knew this day would come. I think he, always, you know, he always felt that he was on a pathway towards this, and I think he just wanted to get down to business. To be quite honest, you know, it's uh, doing the doing the, the first press conference was probably a couple of hours out of his first day that he would have rather have been spent speaking to staff and players and, and cracking on with the job. So, those would be my first impressions. Take people behind the scenes, actually, before you offer your first impressions of McKenna. So, obviously. Ideally, this would have been done in person at a proper press conference, but clearly the situation with COVID and the ever-changing speed of that meant it ended up being on Zoom. Um, so you were, you and Stewie were among a virtual audience um, watching and, and asking questions. You were only allowed one question, though, weren't you? So um, yeah. was that was that one question between you? Did you ask half each? No. Complete each other's sentences like you do so often? Or, uh, it's like did speed you have, dating. Did you have one question each? And then it's like tu you... tubes of soccer AM. One question, yeah. one question only. <laughs> did you feel great pressure for your question? I would have gone real kind of deep. I was, te I was tempted to go completely left field and just just waste it and just say, um, hi, Kieran McKenna, Stuart Watson, East Anglian Daily Times. Uh, where do you keep your eggs? Exactly. That 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 kind of left field question really keep him, get him off balance straight away. He'll go, bloody hell, it's Watson. He's, he's a bit of a character, isn't he? I better be on my P's and Q's with him. Then if he um, said fridge... I would I'd immediately be calling for him to be sat. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your question, Hutchie, in the end? I didn't get a question. Oh, I was, you didn't I was, get... No, I was typing. I was typing away on oh. our live blog. Okay. Um, there's not really much you can do in one question. I'll be I'll be completely honest. Um, yeah. I think Why it's was it just one say. question? Was it just so? It's so, so that people there. So that yeah, because uh, people. This is going to sound salty. People turn up for these things and then go and then then ignore Ipswich Town until the next time they sack or and bring in another manager. Um, yeah. So that's what that's what happened on this occasion. But we'll still be there, won't we, Stu? We'll still we'll be there every time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, that's that, that's why they did that. Um, and um, yeah, some people ignored that. I'll be completely honest. There was there was a, a notable a notable. Uh, human who ignored uh <laughs> protocol i won't say who it was uh it wasn't Stu, um but it was i, I think i take the exact same things away that Stu's done it's the confidence that 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 i i was impressed by from him just i i think you you're going to listen to mckenna and you're not you're not going to get the rousing kind of funny lines that you get out of Paul Cook. There's no voice change. There's nothing like that. But the, the words that he said were, were packed with confidence. Like Sue's already said, he he knew this day would come. 
um, talking about how this club was the perfect fit for him at the perfect time. He he kind of hinted that he, he always thought kind of 35, 36 was the time for him to go out alone. And just a, a pure confidence in his ideas and his background and his journey to this point is going to make him a success. And that's um, that's what I took away from it. Just confidence. Come on, who was the biddy big time we thought he could he could ride roughshod over the one question rule? Name and Someone, shame. I can't, remember, I can't remember his name. Someone from Ireland. Okay. Someone, I've, I assume there with the Manchester United link, there were extra bits of interest, were there? Because of Just the, the Ireland, Ireland, Irish link. Yeah. Okay. Rossi, you, you spoke to fans afterwards. Um, obviously, Town put out a video as well, didn't they, of him, so people could see him. The, the audio from that first presser is available if you've not listened to it yet on this very feed, so go back and listen to it if you've not. What did you make of him, Rossi, and what did the, what did the fans you spoke to make of McKenna? Well, at first, as you saw in the group chat, I said he, he sounds very dull. Um, but that was that was via the club's video. And I think well, that is more, I don't know, rigid, in my opinion, a little bit, the club's video. No offence mm. to the media guys, but it's just, it feels a bit, yeah, staged or is staged. But in the press, I felt it was more relaxed in a way. And I, I, I got more from him. And I actually did enjoy the audio mm. presser. Um, and of course, it's on video as well. And it came across a bit better on there. Um but I think fans were impressed by him. Um, once again, he was confident. Um, of course, he's not got the Paul Cook um, personality. He hasn't got the voice changes and all that. But I think he came across well. But uh, as I said, let his football do the talking on the pitch. And then off the pitch, you may not get the, the cracking lines. But I think um, we'll, we'll see what we'll get from him. A few points down him. I'm sure he's a, a good laugh in the pub. And he's Irish as well. They love to be. I, don't know. I think there's just going to be some more. There's going to be from our from my point of view. It, it feels like there's going to be some more depth to him in, in what in what he says. I think he's going to do a better job of explaining what's going on at the football club to supporters. Um, because I think he's methodical, thoughtful. Everything has a process, and and I, I get the feeling that he's not going to be too against kind of sharing that. He was obviously asked about styles and stuff, and didn't want to give too much away because clearly there's an element of surprise that he's got up his sleeve that other teams don't know what what kind of approach he's going to take to the game because he's obviously never managed himself. But I, I, I get the feeling that it's going to feel a little bit more open. There's going to be no demolition, man. There's going to be no no great great pledges but I, I just think if, if you kind of read read what he says going forward I, th I think I will feel as if there's a bit more kind of knowledge being imparted back to the supporters I would I think say that's what fans have always wanted just just make us feel like we're on part of the journey with you sometimes there's a feeling sort of I think sometimes is aloof aloofness is probably too strong a word but managers kind of feel like I, I don't need to explain myself to you whether it be directly the the questioner within the media or by by extension the wider fan base I don't have to explain why I did this or what I'm thinking and I think that just that's all fans want it's just you know they know they're not we know that we can't be told everything of the inner workings of a football club but just just make 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 everyone feel kind of part of it and like you say show your workings a little bit from time to time and, and that can buy you a bit of goodwill a bit of patience if you can kind of see why someone's trying to do something then you can you can get behind it that little bit more can't you so yeah i think andy's right i think that that will hopefully be uh that will hopefully be um something nice and refreshing for us was there anything i mean clearly you boys now are veterans of these these first press conferences and 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 the, the manager who comes in in these circumstances can't really lose at the first presser as long as they sound vaguely interested and say a few of the right cliches that are always tried out at these things was there anything that that you thought was Interesting. I mean, for me, you've already mentioned it there, Hutchie, the element of surprise, and no one really knows Kieran McKenna's football philosophy and his formations and stuff. And there was there was a quote, wasn't there, on the lines of adaptability and yeah, um, form, formations are overrated. It, you know, the, the old Bruce Lee, be like water, my friend, kind of came to mind. That that for me was probably the most interesting thing that came out of it. How about for you? Yeah, that that the, the word adaptability was was really interesting. I, th I think he used words positive, aggressive, balanced and adaptable in terms of his football philosophy. Um, for, as you say, it's more about a, a style than a formation. Like, it, it, for, I think people people we can all be guilty of getting too bogged down in numbers and formations like yes 4231 is a way that players line up but even if that 
is the same system that McKenna uses as to cook it. It can look so so different by what you're yeah. asking the players to do and and how you're how you're using players within that. Um, so uh, that's that's interesting to me, and and it, and it says to me as well that he's got the right kind of frame of mind to adapt from this time last week coaching Cristiano Ronaldo to this time he's now obviously coaching a group of League One footballers. Clearly, there's a drop off in quality there. But I think he's I think he's clearly going to be a guy who's not just going to come in and assume that Ipswich Town can play um, the system that that Manchester United are asked to. I think he'll have thought about this. I think he he will know he'll know what to do. And I think we're going to see it gradually, kind of gradually see a style mm. make its way onto the pitch um, rather than rather than well, I was going to say at Gillingham. That's obviously been called off. Hopefully at home to Wickham now. Um, I don't think you're going to see kind of a radical overhaul from day one. I think it's going to be a slow process of um, of putting his approach onto the pitch. And just mm. the word adaptable, the word adaptable um, interests me a lot. How about for yourself, Stu? What did you make of him? This is your, what, the fifth new manager, is it? I've lost count now. Possibly. I was looking back through. I think he's the first manager that's gone with the full shirt and tie suit combo since Paul Jewell, looking back through it. I think Mick went with the open shirt. So did uh, Paul Hurst. I think Paul Cook sort of bounced in off the back of a training session with his train training gear on. So um, he looked the part. He had his smart overcoat on and, um, you know, posed for his pictures with, with Mark Ashton and stuff. Um, yeah, the stuff, the stuff about style of play is interesting, isn't it? I think Andy's, Andy's right. We get so bogged down in numbers. The difference between a 4-4-2 and a 4-2-3-1 is, is so subtle. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's just whether a striker drops 10 yards into the hole and whether the wingers push up. I mean, that, that happens throughout phases of play in the game. And I think the way he spoke about sort of what he wants, it's more about what he wants his individual players to do within a system and the, the spaces that he wants them to attack and defend. And he talked about transitions and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how that translates. Um, I'm sure long term he's got some uh, philosophy in mind, but certainly Sunderland last weekend will have given him food for thought because it switched, switched to wing backs and, and looked quite handy with it. It looked as if we're talking about adapting and playing systems and styles that suit your current personnel and their current state of mind, i.e. confidence a bit a bit low. I thought last weekend was was solid and pragmatic and kind of got the job done in terms of the they pressed high, they was physical, they won their battles. Um so I, I'm sure wing backs long term isn't probably want what he wants to do, but I think maybe I wouldn't be straying from that in these next few games at the very least. Mm. Shall we talk then, boys, about you, you've given us a segue there. Obviously, we have to talk about Sunderland. Um, unless there's any other notes from McKenna, we can come back to McKenna, of course. Um, but Sunderland on Saturday, going into it, it was a game that I was, I think we were all probably quite worried about, given the possibility of it completely falling flat. You had the Beatty statue being unveiled, you had two of the owners in, in the stands for the first time, you had new manager in the stands, and you had a team very much in form coming in in Sunderland. That those are the sort of games that Town pretty much always lose, um, and they didn't. And they put on what, by some accounts, was was the best display of the season, at least in the first half. Um, Rossi, what did you make of uh, the Sunderland game? Of course, you went there, were you? I can't ask you about it. You were you were uh, getting you were having a few scoops, weren't you, at uh, T Seg's wedding? Yeah, yeah, but um, of course we were getting updates um, on my table. Um, there was someone getting the updates, and um, when we scored, I went over and sort of went to Segs and went one nil in my hands, and he was going, "Yeah, get in." And then when I went one one, he went, "Stop it! Stop! Just give me updates. You're ruining my day." Um, but no, it, it sounded promising. Um, and of course, I met a few of the fan social lads who came to um, the after party um, for the wedding, and they spoke about it and were were happy and impressed by the first half performance and uh, David wasn't angry he said he had no complaints he said it was wow. a, a good performance so there we go that's praise indeed let me go to people who actually were at the game apologies yep. friends for asking asking Ross what he made of a game that he wasn't there at um Hutchie you were there very much in attendance what did you make of it loved what they did with the with the the crowd with the uh, the flags and um fi fire cannons um, oh you need to 
every game needs fire cannons. If you can't have fire cannons at the, the game before Christmas, at the halfway point of a League One season, what can you have? Um, and that was that was great. Um, and the the team delivered in the in the first half. Like you say, we've, we're used to feeling a little let down on those big those big occasions where the stakes are that little bit higher. Um, but full credit to that those players. Um, many of them didn't actually play at, at Barrow. Um, didn't start the game at Barrow the, the the previous Wednesday, but they came out with a bit between their teeth. Um, they were structured, solid. Um, and attacked when they needed to, um, played on the front foot. And um, I think they deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, just just reward um, to get their lead just before half-time through Norwood. Um, it was it came down the right side, which is where most of it, Ipswich's attacking play came. And um, yeah, it was, it was it was great to watch. And I was pleased for John McGreal as well, because I think he's had a bit of a difficult difficult ride with that. Yeah. And, and the coaching team there of Kieran Dyer and, and Rene Gilmartin, I think, they had a, a tough job to do coming in in the manner that they did um, for the length of time that they did. And I'm pleased that they kind of got to, the three of them got to kind of bow out of the of the first team stage on the back of a, a good performance because I don't think they take the criticism for the Barrow the Barrow debacle. Um, that, that's that's got to be on the players for me. So um, to for them to go out, on the back of a good performance, thanks to a good performance from the players, um, was was fair. I would say, mm. Stewie, fire cannons. Um, <laughs> that's very American, isn't it? Um, I think we need someone riding a, a Suffolk punch around the field. You know, like the Denver Broncos do, Hutchie, when they score a touchdown, they've got a, a Bronco, haven't they, that goes racing across the field. Let's have that at Portman Road, please. Let's have a Suffolk punch being ridden by someone bedecked in town colours, maybe Bluey himself. <laughs> Not sure um, the uh, the groundsman would would thank you for that idea. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care. It's fun. All right. Let's have fire cannons. Let's have horses. Let's have other numerous things. Bits and bats. Make it more of an experience. It did look to be an experience on Saturday. You've already talked about the wing backs, Stewie. What else did you take away from Saturday? Uh, Wes Burns makes a massive difference to this team. It was a real pleasant surprise to see him straight back in in the starting lineup, having missed several games with with a hamstring injury. Um, he hit the ground running from the very start. I think within two, three minutes, he was darting at his, at his opposition fullback, um, doing exactly what Wes Burns does. He take, he beats a man, he gets across into the box, and he, he did that several times in the first half. He His pace and directness completely changes the dynamic of, of this team, um, and he's well suited to, to that wing-back role. So he made a massive difference. Um I thought Sam Morsi in midfield looked particularly fired up. Um, for me, the biggest takeaway was ju was just the, the aggression in this team, the desire. Uh, it was a, They clearly had words in the, in the huddle and in the build-up to this game that, come on, this is a big occasion, we've got to be up for this today. And mm. uh, people were just smashing into 50-50 tackles, winning duels all over the pitch. Morsi, I mentioned, but several others as well, Norwood and Bond. Uh, were sort of uh, pests up front, pressing high. Um, Norwood was leaving bits on people as as balls were getting cleared. And uh, there was one stage where Bon kind of triggered the press and then turned around and, and looked and saw that there was no one within sort of 30, 40 yards of him and was kind of gesturing manically to for everyone to get higher up up the field. So the game plan clearly was to um, to press high pin Sunderland in, get the crowd on side early doors, make sure that none of that sort of nervy atmosphere festered. And uh, they did just that. And um, and sometimes, you know, we talked about overcomplicating the game of football. Sometimes it is just take it back to basics, win your battles and then hope your quality shows from there. And that's um, Ipswich haven't done that enough this season. They did that on Saturday. They fully deserve to be 1-0 up. They just let their, just let it, their concentration slipped for sort of 10 minutes at the start of the second half and reacted really well to that. If anyone deserved to win it, it, it was Ipswich. But, um, you know, from Wigan and Sunderland, the last two league games, there's there's a lot to build on there for McKenna. Hmm. Keep it simple sometimes, eh? And Wes Burns is, is quite a simple footballer, isn't he? You know what you're going to get from him. He's going to get the ball, run at you and try and create things. And that's clearly what... You know exactly what he's going to do, but... yeah. It's one thing knowing it, and it's another thing stopping it. He sort of slows down, squares you up, and then he can just turn on turn on the afterburners and dart past you. So, um, 
it can be predictable, but if it's uh, if it's effective, then why not? The Absolutely. thing I like about Burns is is how you can see him sizing up what he's got in front of him in the first few minutes of the game. He starts games very, very quickly. Um, uh, Ipswich make a conscious effort to get him on the ball early and you can see him kind of working out what he's got and what and, and whether he's going to have the beating of his man. And the games where he works out quickly that he can do it, he then continues to does it to do it because if if it's not broke broken, don't fix it. Like he had the beating of of was it Lyndon Gooch that started at left back for for Sunderland. Um, once he got into that area, it's a little bit more difficult for him to get into that advanced area because of where he was asked to play as as the wing back rather than at the the right of the foot of the attacking three. But when he did get there, um, he knew that he had the beating of him. So mm. why not keep why not keep pushing pushing at the door. Hmm. Uh, someone you probably wouldn't describe as, as simple and uncomplicated. Maybe you would. I don't know. James Norwood, Lord Norwood, has come back with a vengeance, Stu. And, and he has proved to be like the proverbial new signing. And I hate myself saying that. But he's come from the wilderness. The frigid wastelands are pretty much leaving the club. Now very much back in the team. And not only that, he's back in the team and scoring. A few words for Mr Norwood. Scores goals, doesn't he? I think his, his ratio is is a goal every other game or less than that for, over his course of two and a half seasons now at Ipswich Town. Um, this one was was a really good header. Climbs above both both centre halves and and powers in off the underside of the bar after the, the cross from Bon had deflected up in the air. Um, at Wigan, we saw him point to the name on the back of his shirt, making a little bit of a point to the uh, the club's hierarchy. I think that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm still here, and I'm, I'm I can be useful to you. Uh, this time, he uh, after a big hug with Macaulay Bond, they seem to have a bit of a a bromance going on at the moment. He, he ran over to the dugouts and uh, gave Kieran Dyer a, a big warm embrace because um, Kieran's been the man that's kind of I think kept his spirits high whilst playing for the 23s. It has kept him kept him sharp. He scored a couple of goals for for the 23s, and it's meant that. When he has returned from the cold, he's been uh, ready and raring to go. Um, mm -hmm. What I would say about James Norwood is, we'll say whatever you want about his large personality, his social media antics, or everything that comes with James Norwood. One thing that's not been in question is how he's kept himself physically fit. By all accounts, he was back in pre-season. He was leading the way in terms of a lot of, a lot of the, um, the various physical tests they put themselves through. He's got himself in really good nick this season, and he's he, even despite everything that's happened, he's kept himself in really good nick, and that that is great credit to him that he has been able to to come back and and have the impact he has over the last week or so. Mm. Any other notes from from Sunderland Hutchie before we uh, before we move on to something else? Just that, just that McKenna's inheriting a a, a club and a team that, despite everything that's that's gone on and the disappointments that have gone on this season. He's remarkably, it's a manager receive like inheriting something that's in a, a fairly decent place. Like how mm. uh, that, that crowd wasn't there for Kieran McKenna at the weekend. You can, you can, it, you can, it, when a new manager comes in, you can expect a bit of a, a bounce in the terraces as well. And for, that crowd wasn't there for, for him. That would have been there, even if it was caretaker manager, John McGreal and Kieran Dyer in charge of this. So, He's inheriting a club that's in a, a good place, despite another season that's that's been very disappointing to this this date. And um, he's got a good platform to build on. He'd have seen plenty that he can work with in that in that team. And um, there's every reason to think that that, that there's a, a chance of hitting the ground running here. Where that takes them, who knows? But um, mm. it's a good a good platform to work from. Just I should probably name check. Sorry, a couple of players before we move on. I thought Luke Wolfenden looked really uh well suited to that that back three he played in the sort of center of the three and sort of enabled him to kind of sweep up and, and be that calm presence we know he can be in, in defense so may, maybe that door is open again for him now because he hasn't played a great deal this season and i thought sonny aluko mm. in in his own sort of understated way was probably man of the match for ipswich town he he played in that sort of central number 10 position we we're used to seeing him out wide and while the kind of muck and bullets of a of the game were kind of flying around him. All the, the tackles were going in in the high press. 
he was the one that just kind of calmed everything down at times, especially in that second half where they had a little 10 minute wobble. They conceded, um, Walter made a save moments later and you're thinking, oh, this, this could, this could unravel quite quickly. He was the one that just puts his foot on the ball, slows the game down, picks a pass. He's, um, he's, uh, he oozes quality at times. You can see he's played at a higher level. So, um, yeah, praise for Sonny Aluko, especially given that everything he's gone through with losing his, his father recently. From what I gather, he wasn't able to to get back to Africa and attend the funeral as well. So, um, big credit to him. Mm. One of us, boys, I won't say which one, but one of us, when ranking Town's summer transfer business, may have put Sonny Aluko 19th and bottom of that list. One of us might have done that. Bloody idiot. Sonia Luco, bottom. Um, yeah, let's just say that I'm going to be redoing that list over the festive period uh, at the halfway point because it gives me opportunity to take the piss out of myself a bit, which is always good because I got a lot wrong. Um, again, as the wife will tell you, that's my that's my MO. Um, just going back to Ed McKenna and Dyer, Stewie. Um, obviously, Dyer, Kieran Dyer, uh, is a very, very talented, well thought of young coach. McKenna made reference in his press conference to someone else joining his coaching team. Um, it would be fantastic, wouldn't it, if I, I realise that Dyer has a job already, he's on the 23s, but it would be fantastic to see him play more of a part in, in the first team going forward. Uh, I, I would think so, yeah, because John McGrill was now obviously was hired to be his assistant for the 23s and have this kind of generic... Uh, academy coaching role. So that situation is a little bit blurred now that you do, do you need Dyer and McGrill doing the 23s. There's a slot open with the first team at the moment. So many players have name checked Kieran Dyer's influence behind the scenes now. We just talked about Norwood uh, taking to social media to say how unbelievable he's been for him. You, you have to only look at people like uh, Amando Dobber and Idris El Mazzuni, how warmly they speak of his impact that he's had. With the under 23s, I, I said, I've said this before. I think we sometimes underestimate what an asset Kieran Dyer is to Ipswich Town. This is a man who has 33 England caps to his name, who's played at the highest level, level played in the Newcastle team that were finishing where did they finish fourth in, in the league Ooh. at one stage? Is um, so I, I think he's a I think he's a player's player. I think he could be that really good buffer between McKenna and the playing squad. And I think it's, I know that the new managers quite often want a clean slate and they want to bring in all their own people. But I think Kieran could be a really good link and could be that sort of trusted. McKenna's probably used to being the man that the players can go and speak to if they've got a gripe that they don't really want to go to the manager about. But now, he's kind of elevated and he can't be that sort of mm. friendly shoulder to cry on for the players anymore. And I, I, I can't think of anyone better than Kieran Dyer to do that, to be quite honest. But we'll, we'll see what route they go down. I think they're going to take their time. I'm sure McKenna's worked with lots of coaches and there'll be lots of different people on, on his mind. But it wouldn't shock me if uh, if, it, if it ends up being Dyer. That would be lovely. I want Kieran Dyer to be a Swiss Town manager one day. I think he's... Um... Over, over kind of looked in some ways because of his playing career and his reputation, but someone who's really gone away and worked on, on the coaching side of things and clearly has a great love for the game and, and could be great, I think, at Ipswich Town one day. Hutchie, um, in terms of McKenna and adding to his coaching staff, a lot of, I haven't asked you this off camera before I uh, ask you this question, so you may start doing this sort of sign at me. But um, a lot of people are saying, um, well, Jim McGilton loves McKenna. Let's get Jim back. What do you say to that? Do you think Jim would want to come back to the club that, I don't know, sacked him as manager? Um, he's, a, he's still a legend, just as, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, of course he is. But I, 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 I'm not sure he would want to come back to, in just a coaching role. I don't know. Um, I would be surprised if mm. if that uh, either McKenna is is playing a great uh, bluff or or he's honest when he says he hadn't actually spoken to Jim McGilton since taking this job. So um, that's either an incredible bluff or... Uh, or he hasn't spoken to him. Um, I, I would be surprised if that happened, but it, it's good that Jim's can be an asset to Kieran McKenna, can be someone that he can speak to, to learn, not not just, obviously, Jim probably can't tell Kieran an, an awful lot about the club right now and, and, and where it's at. He might not even be able to tell him an awful lot about many of the players here, but what he will be able to tell him about is 
what the club means to the the area, um, what buttons to press and, and what, what it could be like if he gets the club going in the way that we all hope he does. So it's great that, that Jim could be a, an asset to this club going forward, but it, it would it would surprise me. Um, it would surprise me if, if he ended up actually on on the staff here. It does sound like something might be fairly imminent in terms of a, a member of coaching staff coming in from another club that that, that could happen um, before Christmas, potentially, with, with maybe something else further down the line. We'll, we'll see. OK. And just, just to cross the I's and dot the T's, as I like to do, or the other way around, um, in terms of Cook's departure, people like Peter Reid, I assume, have gone, have they? They're no longer at the club. They're all gone. Peter Reid wasn't ever really at the club. I, I think he was... <laughs> Let's be honest. I think he was on—he was on the end of a phone, wasn't he? Or, or come down and like like David Brent taking his dog in to yeah to work. Um, I would imagine that's—I imagine that's the case. Yeah, I watched that last night, by the way. Classic, the, isn't it? The the Office Christmas specials from two thousand and three, still a classic. Sorry, Stu. What were you going to no, say? No, no, I was just going to say, I mean, Peter Reid was at the games, wasn't he? He was kind of their, their man in the stand, was meant to be sort of a, a different viewpoint. But yeah, he certainly wasn't ever about the, the, the training ground every day or anything like that. It was very mm. much a sort of a, a Paul Cook ally. So I, I don't know if they actually formally announced cutting ties with Peter Reid along with all the others, but I'm 99.9% <laughs> sure that, uh, that he is no longer associated with Ipswich Town. He shuffled quietly out of the back door. Rossi, unmute yourself. Sorry that you uh, have been on mute and out of the out of the loop for so long. We're talking about a game you weren't at. Um, a game that isn't going to happen on Boxing Day, Gillingham. Now, clearly, that is a bad thing from the point of view of fans who bought tickets and you know, Boxing Day football is a bit of a tradition, isn't it? Um, but could it be, my friend? Could it be exactly what Kieran McKenna needs? Not having a game so quickly into his reign. He has a bit more time with the players, and then in theory, his first game will be at home against Wickham. Do you agree? Yes. He's got more time on the training grounds. And the last time a manager had his first game against Gillingham, we lost 3-0. Paul Cook's first game. Um, yeah, that 3 was 3-1. Three one. Don't, don't, oh, oh. don't you erase Luke Chambers' oh. final Ipswich Town goal from the record. Yeah. He'll, he'll have you for oh, that. We took the lead, didn't we? Did we take the lead? Or did we close? So. Yeah. I remember. So it started, started so well. But um, yeah, the last time we played Gillingham, with a new manager in charge, we lost. Um, but no, more time on the training grounds, and I think drilling them on a Boxing Day in that 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 stand. I'm sure fans are going to be freezing their butts off. I think because um, mm. it is just in the elements there. But um, yeah, as I said, more time on the training ground, get to know his players a bit more, and um, bring on Wickham at home, and he's got a homecoming at, at Portman Road. His first game should be a big crowd as well. Hutchy, a lot of people are getting very excited. Speaking of McKenna on the training ground, pictures of him wearing Copper Mundials, um, which, you know, they're a sexy boot, I suppose. Um, but in terms of what he's actually learning on the training ground, um, we spoke very briefly before this started about players who may benefit from, from Kieran McKenna's arrival. Shall we discuss that a little bit now? Are there, are there any for you that stand out thinking, well, so-and-so is going to be uh, up the charts, as it were, under McKenna? Yeah, yeah. Um... I think every player can benefit. You'd hope that there's a an open mind, and I'm sure there is from from Kieran McKenna. He's he said that he knows a fair amount about this this mm. group. He, he kind of listed kind of groups of players that he he already knows about, and he, he's worked with Kane Vincent Young and Tom Carroll at Tottenham. He says he knows a few of them who have come through London London academies. He knows other players just by watching football 24 seven as a football coach, and and he has watched Town's last eight to ten games. He says kind of picking through the the wreckage as it as it were so he 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 knows a lot about these players heading onto the training ground but you'd hope that he'd arrive um with the eyes the eyes open um a few that could benefit Luke Wolfenden we talked about I think he could be one that could definitely benefit a technical defender who should benefit from a technical coach and it's up to Luke then to to kind of take that Luke's a big man United fan so he'll know he'll know all about Kieran McKenna um that's up to Luke. If there's a, a technical coach who's who's there, who's able to help him learn and progress at, at 23, it'd be great if he could make a bit of a jump. I think the strikers could all benefit Bon and Bon and Norwood in in particular. Um, McKenna talks about winning the ball back as high up the pitch as they possibly can, and they've got a big job to play in that. I think they could they could benefit from him. And um, the other one I think 
could benefit. Miles Kenlock, who we're only, what, seven days away from him potentially being able to be named at, and, and play games. Um, you never know. It's a clean slate. He can, <laughs> he can, he can, he can play again in, in a week. If they can change that squad, they need, I'm not sure Matt Penny's the the one at left back, and, and who knows? Miles might, Miles might at least in the short term, and it would be the short term because I'm, I feel sure that a left back is ultimately on the recruitment list. He's um, he's got a chance because I, I don't think he'd have got that chance under Paul Cook. So it's a, a, a clean slate for him, and he's the one that could 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 benefit from it the most. If you're um, just listening on audio and not watching on video, you will not have seen Ross Halls um, giving. The old someone's shit in my kettle face. Uh, absolutely disgusted at that suggestion. Stewie, have you got any names to throw into the McKenna up the charts mix? Um, beyond what Andy's just said, uh, can he unlock a little bit more out of Carl Edwards? We know that there's so much talent in him, but just that end product hasn't been there thus far. Is McK- McKenna used to working with young, talented technical footballers, someone like Carl Edwards, maybe even Rakeem Harper, finally sort of unlock a little bit more in, in some of those young young players that Ipswich bought, bought in the summer. But I think he'll be pretty open-minded. I think this is going to be a, a clean slate and um, he'll judge it with, with his own eyes over the coming days. I know what you're saying about the G- Gillingham game being off maybe gives him a bit of time, but have wanted to play Gillingham. They've just lost six games in on the spin. They've they've got some some key injuries at the moment. It's uh, that was a good chance to get off to a to a winning start. And now instead you're going into Wickham and, and Lincoln, um, which is is that little bit trickier, mm. isn't it? I'm with you on that one. I, I I think regardless of the opposition, Gillingham or, or or whoever it would have been, I think he'd have wanted to play. Um, just play. He's he's itching. He's he wants to take charge of a professional game mm. as his own man for the first time. I think he'll just he he would have just wanted to wanted to get out there and play whoever whoever it was. But um, Wickham at home with twenty five thousand, hopefully in attendance, isn't isn't a bad kind of second second price. Absolutely not. Right then, boys. Um, it is the Christmas show, and I thought we we don't really do these things anymore. Uh, it's all got a bit serious on this podcast. Mm necessarily so sometimes um we don't really have asides but i thought on a christmas show let's have an aside let's have a little christmas game because it is christmas so i bring you now mark's christmas game um mark's, is that what it's called yeah mark's christmas game it's got a theme tune as well do you want to hear it please mark's christmas game mark's christmas game mark's christmas game oh what fun it is to play mark's christmas game I thank, you. Uh, I thank you. I thank you. Uh, right then, boys. This came to mind because I don't know about you. I know you're not big fans of social media, but on mine, flashing up at the moment is an offer to have certain, shall we say, past their best celebrities record you Christmas messages as a gift. And I thought, as I was scrolling, thinking, hmm, this is interesting, just looking at the pricing, um, th- there's a game in this for the Christmas special, the Christmas show. So, very simply, boys, this is a higher or lower game. I'm going to give you a name. You're going to give me whether he's higher or she or lower than the celebrity, in some of these very lo- loosely termed celebrities, before. And we'll just go around, round robin, until there's one surviving winner of Mark's Christmas game, who then gets Boxing Day off, boys. There you go. Um, right then. I will start. We'll go in clockwise fashion. So the first name on this list is Will Meller, formerly of Hollyoaks fame. You can see where we're pitching this, boys. And there are some I'm going to have to explain, in fact, because I don't know who they are. I'll put little notes next to them. Um, Will Meller costs £40 if you want a Christmas message for him, which seems like a bargain for me. Um, <laughs> the next name, Andy Warren, higher or lower, is Vaz Blackwood, cheaper or more expensive. Now, Vaz Blackwood, again, obviously you probably don't know who Vaz Blackwood is, but he, no. he plays an iconic role. I'm hoping you've seen this film, given your film history. Lock, stock, two smoking barrels. He is no. the young man with the afro in the pub who sets fire to someone and also has a famous line, if the milk is sour, I'm not the sort of to drink it. Um, and that's probably his crowning glory, I would say, as an individual. Um, so I don't know where you'd rank him in terms of, I would say Will Miller's is probably better known so £40 for Will Meller for a Christmas message. Are you saying 
Baz Blackwood is higher or lower than that fee? I'm saying if he's not done anything of note since Lockstock, he needs the cash. So he will be trying to profit on anybody stupid enough to pay for this. So he's higher than Will Meller. You're wrong. He's lower. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you stay in because I've got so many of these and I don't want the game to be yeah. straight away. So that we'll take that as a little training, a training one. Do we all have like a little life? One, we've yeah, all got, you've got one, you've got one, one life. mulligan. Let's, let's all have one life. It is Christmas after oh. that. Um, Baz Blackwood then, £25. A bargain at £25. <laughs> um, Roscoe, again, a man before your time, mm. but, um, a fan of facial hair, and I'm sure you'd have heard of him, Ian Rush. Liverpool legend, icon. Probably higher. Liverpool. Away. You're saying higher, higher than yeah. 25 pounds. You are right. Ian Rush, 145 pounds. Ooh, 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 Ian. Yes. Me, seems a bit rich for my what taste. Ian Rush. Exactly. What you exactly. <laughs> now then, Stewie, next one for you. Ian Rush, 145 pounds. Is Wayne Lineker? <laughs> Is Wayne Lineker? More expensive or cheaper to get a personal message from than Ian Rush? Well, obviously the answer should be cheaper, but Wayne Lineker seems like the sort of character that of inflated ego that that thinks he should be charging ridiculous amounts. So, on that basis, I'm saying higher. You, my friend, are wrong. You've lost your life. Wayne Lineker is only sixty quid. Bargain. Sixty quid. That's not the real Wayne Lineker. He. You bet- yeah, he's de- no that? Stu's bang on. He's he's definitely he's definitely. I don't think more. I don't think they have a say, do they? Don't they sign up to this? There are, there are several of these uh, companies out there, and I assume that the pricing is then set by the company. I'm not, I'm not sure they can okay. say. Anyway, oh, Wayne Lineker, Wayne Lineker, sixty quid. Okay, Hutchie. Now you and Stu have both burned up a life. Next time you get this wrong, you're out, my friend. So take it seriously, please. Um, Wayne Lineker, sixty pounds, sir, sir, Mo Farah. Is he higher or lower than Wayne Lineker? Can I just say I bought one of these once for my brother. I bought Did him you? one of the, the surviving Chuckle brother for his birthday, um, <laughs> and, he, and it was and it was cheaper than Wayne Lineker. Um, I'm going to go. Mo Farah is going to be higher than than Wayne Lineker. Mo Farah is higher than Wayne Lineker. Hundred pounds for Mo Farah. Rossi, you're the only one who hasn't yet burned your life. I don't think you're going to burn it now because the next one up is. We've had Ian Rush. Next up is Kevin Campbell, <laughs> for, formerly of Arsenal and Everton, I believe, Stu. Um, probably Stu didn't, loves Kevin Campbell. Didn't quite hit the heights that Ian Rush did, maybe, in his career. Um, is he is he, is he he cheaper or more expensive than £100 for a personalised Christmas message? I think, I think footballers will be expensive, but I think it will be the lower tier, unfortunately, Kevin Campbell. Um, I'm sure he does a good video message, but yeah, lower. Very much lower. Kevin Campbell, the cheapest of the lot on my list. Fifteen pounds for poor old Kevin. If you want to say hello? Um, that's re- that's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> that's where's Barry I... Cotter? Where's Barry Cotter on this out of interest? I assume he's he's priced out of the market. Look, look oh, that for my secret Santa next year, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> right then, Stewie. Again, you you like Hutchie are walking the tightrope of incorrect answers. Next one you get, you're out, and you don't get Boxing Day off. Um, Clinton Baptiste, a character from Phoenix Knights. Again, a famous line. I'm getting a, I'm getting a word, and that word is he's the, uh, the, oh, psychic, yeah. the psychic medium. Um, is he cheaper or more expensive than Kevin Campbell? I've already told you the answer, of course, without re- really meaning to. But there you Have go. You? I missed that. Um, fifteen quid. I, does it go much lower than fifteen? Um, I have already said if it goes much lower than 15 quid, but you weren't listening, which is good. No, higher then. <laughs> higher, yes. <laughs> I, did, I did accidentally reveal that Kevin Campbell is the, is the cheapest on my list. <laughs> Clinton Baptiste. <coughs> Clinton Baptiste will cost you £40 if you want him. I would imagine he basically says that that line with a Christmassy, Christmassy do, tinge. Do the catchphrase. I can't. I can't on a family show. Um, do the catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, then Clinton Baptiste, forty pounds. Hutchie, another another former footballer on here. Lee Hendry is he cheaper or more expensive than forty pounds? Remember, my friend, if you get this wrong, you're out. I think he's more expensive. You're wrong. Oh. Andy Lee Hendry is only thirty pounds. You, my friend, will be working all of Boxing Day. Oh. Um, 
Next up, Roscoe. Again, you still got your life in hand. This is great. This is great quizzing, boys. Um, Alan Fle Oh, actually, he's actually taken himself out of the game as well to, to build tension. Um, Alan Fletcher, my friends. Alan Fletcher is a man who plays Dr. Carl Kennedy on Neighbours. A bit, a, bit, a, bit a, a bit of an iconic role. Um, is he cheaper and more expensive than the £30 you'd have to pay Lee Hendry? Ooh, he's got to be lower, surely. You're wrong, my friend. Ooh. Your life, your life has now been burned. You and you are now level pegging. The next person to get something the wrong. Loses. Listeners of a similar age to myself and probably Andy mm. as, as well will, will have probably met um, what's what's Carl Kennedy's real name? Alan Fletcher. Alan Fletcher was very much did the rounds, the, the student union rounds, um, back in the sort of early noughties. Yeah. which I didn't really question at the time, but people queued up to sort of get their picture taken with him and, and get an autograph, which is it's a little bit weird looking back. He was he was very much, as I say, I watched the Office Christmas specials last night, very much in that kind of sphere. They, they feature Howard from the Halifax on there, um, Bubble from Big Brother, um, Squeaky McLean from the Big Breakfast, all in that kind of sphere, and Dr. Cole Kennedy very much in there. But he'll cost Timmy, you Timmy Mallet rocked up once as well. Timmy Mallet, yeah. It will cost you thirty-five pounds, Doctor Carl Kennedy, if you oh. want a personalised message. So he was just slightly more expensive than oh. Lee Henry. Next one up, Stewie. Remember now, next one gets one wrong, you've lost. Okay, thirty-five pounds is another Lee Lee Latchford Evans of and Steps Steps, <laughs> Steps fame. Is he cheaper <laughs> or more expensive than thirty-five pounds? Oh, Lee, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say cheaper, Mark. And you're going to be wrong, Stuart. Oh. You've lost. <laughs> He's, Lee Latchford Evans, my friend, is 65 quid. Mm. I assume because you'll do a bit wow. of tragedy or something. I don't know. Um, so, Roscoe, you've won. You're the winner of the Christmas quiz. You get Boxing Day off. These two have to work from noon, from, sorry, from, from morning till midnight. Um, <laughs> there we go. What's the next one? <laughs> Just for the, for the bands. Chris Sutton. He's upper, isn't he? He's probably upper. He's not, no, he's cheaper. Oh. Oh, so wow. you, you would have been out next. Chris Sutton's £50. I did wonder, boys, if we should just like pull our money and get Chris Sutton to, to record something for us saying how, how much better it's just town rather than Norwich. Just apologise for all the um, be careful what you wish for nonsense that he's that he's been peddling. But we Will could they we literally could, say anything. We could make him say anything, couldn't we? For yeah. £50. I mean, yeah, we, we could. could. We could we could do all sorts of fun things with that. Um, I'll throw a few other names out because I've got a big long list. Um, Razor Ruddock, boys. How much do you reckon you're paying Razor Ruddock for a, a Christmas He's message? He's cash. Big cash. £80. Incorrect. £35. Oh. Um, oh. Jimmy Bullard, formerly of this parish. £100. Stewie's saying 50 Ross is saying 100 Your closest, Ross, £90 for Jimmy Bullard. You should know this, Stewie, um, Hutchie. Paul Chuckle, because you've, you've employed his services Both, before. Yeah, um... 35 40 quid he's put five oh, he's, he's, you, put his, he's, put his, <laughs> he's put his prices up. he did a great job to be fair really good job um of the message from my brother i assume it started uh from me to you or something yeah. like that yeah that's exactly it's a message from me to you excellent probably quite profitable i'd imagine for him um robbie but fowler I, his overheads are tiny right he's just sat he sat in a chair two exactly. minutes Thirty-five pounds for two minutes. What's that hourly rate? Is insane. Hundred percent. If you've got, as long as your demand is there, and I'm, I'd imagine there's probably quite a high demand for Paul Chuckle. Is there a demand for Robbie Fowler though? What are we saying for him? Yeah, Liverpool legends. Uh, hundred and twenty pounds. Close. One hundred and ten. A um, couple more, boys. This one's especially for you. I put this on especially for you and Hutchie Stewie because it's you and Macintosh. Do you know who that is? Yeah. Keith from the office, Mr. Scotch Egg Eater Supreme. How much do you reckon you, he's costing you for a, a Christmas message? Why well, I'd imagine he eats a Scotch egg while he delivers I hope a so. message. I'd be very disappointed. If he, 50 quid. 45 quid, Keith from the office. And finally, another Liverpool legend. Bear in mind, Ian Rush was 145 quid. Michael Owen. How much are you paying Michael Owen? He's got to be 100 as well, hasn't he? Um, I think he's going to price oh. himself high. We've got, we've got a... More than Rush. Yeah. 160. Any thoughts, Hachi? 160. 
what 160 he's 135 pounds so he's a tenner cheaper than ian rush there we go so have Ender, you seen before we move on, michael game. owen have you seen the michael owen thread from uh his congratulations to emma, emma Raducanu Raducanu, this yeah. week? wonderful search it out <laughs> yeah absolutely tremendous absolutely tremendous um boys that brings us to the end of mark's christmas game and indeed the kings of anglia christmas show i suppose we'd better before we go reflect on the fact that town have got wickham and lincoln coming up at home over the festive period should those games go ahead and should fans be there um on the face of it a pretty tough start for for mr mckenna stewie yeah Wick, wickham is probably your closest thing to what welcome to league one football type of match we know exactly what they are they're they're, they're big direct they're physical um they're on a decent run of form just looking looking at their results three wins and, and two draws in their last five so um yeah a, a tough start but a, a big crowd again at portman road obviously um it's which beaten 4-1 at their place so it's it's doable west burns is back who was who was big in that game as well so really looking forward to it if 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 it goes ahead of course because uh mm. who knows how these next few weeks are, are going to pan out yeah so on certain times actually how are you feeling about the festive period for town yeah just 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 want them to get on the pitch and play um to not be playing for a second successive boxing day um is sad boxing day football is great um but yeah, just looking forward to them getting on the pitch and, and getting getting McKenna McKenna up and running as as soon as possible. Really, Rossi, any thoughts? Hopefully, it will be a new manager bounce and we get that first win under McKenna. Um, so, hopefully, three points in the bag. And just before we go today, Hutchie, what's your shirt of the day? What's the new one that's peeking over your right shoulder? Nice little blue. You tell me. Yellow number. Uh, Any guesses? Is that sponsor? Is that sponsor Colon? Co it's a dis. A fault. You got a fold there. Yeah, it's brought to you by the small intestines. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a D. It's a folded up D. It's Co Codan. Codan. So is that South American? South American team? No. European. Mm, yep. Is it Marseille? No. I've got mm. no idea, I'll be honest. Is with it you. Palmer? No. Spanish? No. Spanish? Oh. Danish. Italian. Dan oh, Danish. Danish. Oh, Hel Hel Helsingborg. That's Sweden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> FC Copenhagen. Good, good, solid. That's a good, solid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely Danish, but no, no, it's not them. Uh, I don't know any Danish You're going to say it's you. I can see it. Mitch to... Mitchelland. No. Oh, I thought you were going to say it. Peter Schmeichel's team. Brondby. Oh, Brondby. Oh, yeah. I uh, thought they were Swedish. <laughs> I would have said that. It's a nice one, though. Is that a new one? Mm. Oh, no, very. I've had it years and years and years. Just thought I'd give you a little treat for everyone. I've got the, That's their away kit. I've got their home kit as well. Oh. Oh. Complete we'll save that for... Yeah. We'll save that for another time, another festive special, perhaps Christmas 2022. Let's not yeah, go lock, too early. Lock that in. Yeah. <laughs> right then, boys. Um, that's been the Christmas pod. Um, we had a Christmas game. We talked a lot about Kieran McKenna. We talked about the Gillingham game being off, the Sunderland game very much being on and being an encouraging to one. And we have, of course, a festive period ahead now. Um, friends, please leave us a five star review on iTunes because that helps us greatly with the visibility in the charts. That's really been really good. We've got a few of those recently, which is great. Um, follow us across all our social medias, Kings of Anglia on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And also friends, remember to support our sponsor Manscaped because Manscaped have just re-signed the sponsorship deal with us for another period, shall we say, making it totally worth my while buying everyone I know a testicle shaver for Christmas using the code KOA for 20% off and free delivery from manscaped.com. Right then. Christmas show in the books. We're off to eat mince pies and drink sherry. Next time we speak to you, Christmas will have been over and we'll be building up, hopefully, to Ipswich Town hosting Wickham at home. Have a great Christmas, every single one of you. Um, and we'll speak to you again post-Christmas. See you then.